Hi, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World, and um, uh, I wanted to uh, talk a second today about Chris Rock and uh, this article that was written in Salon.com about Chris Rock. Um, it, it was an interesting article written by Michael Denzel Smith. Um, I, I, only, I only know Michael Denzel Smith from uh, the fact that he uh, he was one of the co-signers on an open letter uh, that was, was pretty nasty toward me about an article that I wrote on behalf of black males basically discussing uh, false allegations against black men and uh, why sexual promiscuity amongst black men is just not a good idea. Um, I remember that the, the dispute involved the fact that, uh, they, that there were liberals who felt that my mere mentioning false accusations uh, against black men was somehow blaming the victim or ignoring uh, uh, sexual assault problems and and I and I had to stand my ground on that article because uh, I said look I, I'm not condoning sexual assault on any level I have daughters I, I wouldn't want any of them to be raped and also um, I mentioned very clearly in my article that I'm not talking to men who would ever have sex with a woman against her will so I basically had to say you know you guys can can get out of here with that because you're, you're wrong and just the mere idea that we have a group of black males that are working so adamantly uh, against the idea of advocating for black males really is a symptom of the um, the intellectual imperialism that consistently occurs particularly in academic spaces where you have african-american males uh, with some degree of prominence some degree of power uh, who are indoctrinated into a purely liberal ideology to the point where they even are are afraid to truly advocate uh, for other black men particularly if it's at the expense of white women or gays or, or etc um, and I don't it's not that I don't believe in equal rights for everybody but I believe in equal rights for everybody and what I mean by that is that uh, I believe that women deserve to be protected. I believe the gay community deserves to be protected. But I also believe that black men deserve to be protected. And and what's unfortunate though is that black men, to some extent, are a very scattered group. Uh, we are probably the most abused group in society. We're the most likely to be incarcerated, most likely to be murdered in the street, most likely to be unemployed. We're marginalized in every single way, um, as, as a collective. And so what what tends to happen is people will throw black men under the bus in order to promote their own agenda. And that's why I pretty much had to tell the guys to go to hell on that letter N not to say that I couldn't be friends with them later I said look if you guys want uh, to uh, collaborate and me for me to support you as as brothers on other issues let me know but I'm not going to stand with you on this because I believe it's bullshit uh, because what was also interesting was that the uh, their, their critique of my article didn't include any quotes any excerpts any links or anything to really prove the point they just sort of said well you you were irresponsible and callous in your analysis and and I'm like okay if I'm callous please tell me how tell me how, explain it like give me give me some examples show me where I was callous and I said you know unfortunately the reason that you can't find evidence that I behaved in this way in this article is because there is no evidence uh, this was this article was was thought through very carefully and I'm not going back down when it comes to standing up and supporting black males as a collective body um, and but supporting them uh, is, is more complex than what many people in the liberal or conservative establishments will have you believe uh, and so if you want to you know understand it a little better uh, you can go to my article the uh, the articles on brothers on sports.com and the article is basically called uh, um, something like um, uh, a, a letter to young brothers uh, how sleeping with the wrong woman can turn you into a rapist and I put the word rapist in quotes because for many black men just the mere allegation of being a rapist even if you didn't do it the allegation alone would destroy you because as a black man you don't have access to a fair justice system you don't have access to the money to defend necessary to defend yourself in court that jury is not going to look at your big black butt and believe that you're an innocent man so what I believe is that to protect black men we have to protect them uh, in a preemptive uh, uh, preemptive way as opposed to um, an ex post kind of way and you know looking back and saying this person was falsely accused that's fine but it doesn't help him if he's been in prison five six years and you're doing the DNA test to go back in time and find out if he did it I tell brothers be careful from the jump because there are women out here that will falsely accuse you of rape and I'm not backing away from that uh, now uh, that's why I had an interaction with Michael Denzel Smith I didn't want to go into uh, that in too much detail but it sounds like I just did so forgive me uh, thank you for bearing with me on that um, the the other thought that I wanted to, to, to sort of throw out here was uh, Michael wrote an, an article for salon.com uh, which is a very liberal kind of uh, outlet um, 
and it basically it's interesting because it, it, I almost feel like he's throwing Chris Rock under the bus. He's sort of lumping Chris Rock together with Charles Barkley and Don Lemon, um, and even Bill Cosby. And 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 I understand the point that he was making. I think he was really sort of uh, challenging this uh, notion of what they call respectability politics, which says that if every or what I or I, I, in my book, what if George Bush were a black man? I actually refer to it as the good Negro behavior protocol, which basically says that if we can get a hundred or, or forty million black people to all behave in you know in, in a perfect way, then racism won't exist anymore. They won't be arrested anymore. Bad things won't happen to us anymore. And I, so I think it's kind of a silly way to look at the world. So I think respectability politics, I think we're in agreement that that is uh, a flawed way of kind of looking at things. Uh, you can't just tell young black men that they have to behave and the police won't ever harass them because that's not true. But at the same time, you uh, this is where uh, where Michael and I would get off the, the on separate buses. Um, I say, look, but at the same time, I'm going to tell young brothers, don't go out here acting like an asshole. Because if you do, bad things are going to happen to you and worse things are going to happen to you because you're black. There is a degree of responsibility on you to make sure that when you go out into the world, you conduct yourself in a way that A, minimizes the risk to yourself and those you love, and B, uh, supports and elevates the community from which you came. Uh, you can't go out here acting like a nigga. And I say that, and I, and I use that word deliberately in that particular uh, statement because there are people who think that Chris Rock's analysis of black people versus niggas is somehow entirely flawed and wrong and it promotes respectability politics no it says don't act like a nigga you know if you if you you know and, what, and the, here's the thing it comes from media it comes from these these corporations mostly owned by whites that promote black people who run around calling themselves niggas you know rappers I'm a nigga in Paris I'm a thug nigga I'm a nigga nigga I'll, I'll kill your babies I'll kill I'll kill another black man I'll steal your money I'll throw I'll get throw my money to Gucci and and I and I'll sleep with every woman I can get my hands on and catch every STD imaginable and then spread it to as many black women as possible that's how a nigga behaves so the fact and the thing is that that you need good nigga training to learn how to behave like a nigga um and what I mean by that is that training occurs in media and where's that media coming from it's not coming from black people it's not coming from the black community it's coming from corporations like Clear Channel um uh you know, to some, uh, uh, what was it, Clear Channel, and um, and there's another one that's really big. I, I can't remember. Uh, I'll, I won't even think about it. I'll think about it later. Uh, you know, these record labels, Universal's, Epic Records, etc., promoting artists that are running around talking about you know shooting other black people in the face and all this other dumb stuff. And that's where that 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 niggerism really comes from. And so um, I understood exactly what Chris Rock was saying. And what I really thought was interesting was that when you look at Denzel's or Denzel Smith's piece. Um, he doesn't do a good job of really sorting through um, you know, what can be defined as legitimate advocacy for the black community versus people sort of blaming the black community for racism. Uh, but you can't lump Don Lemon and Charles Barkley with Chris Rock or even Bill Cosby. And I'm talking about the pre-rapist Bill Cosby. I, I, I think those, you know, all those uh, 35, 40 year old allegations are interesting. I'm, I'm wondering, honestly, like why it's all kind of coming up now. I, I do feel that there's somebody in media that's saying, okay, we're going to keep piling on this and throwing this out there because, you know, and that's fine. I mean, if it's true, then it's true. I mean, Cosby has to answer for that. There's no question about that. But at the same time, there is always that question of like, why now? Why are we talking in 2014 about something that happened in 1969, 1972, 1974? It's just so strange, you know, but, 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 even even beyond that, even if you assume Bill Cosby did these terrible things, um, you can't assume that Bill Cosby has never, ever, ever cared about black people in his own way. Now, mind you, I don't agree with Cosby on a lot of stuff. I've been very critical of Cosby, uh, but at the same time, I see, I've see i always seen Cosby as kind of um, like uh, that old grandfather who is telling you things you don't want to hear. Um, and some of, the, some, some of the things he's telling you are just flat out wrong and out of touch. But he's saying it because he loves you, because he cares about you. Uh, Cosby endured a lot of criticism from the black community because he cared about about a segment of the black community. Uh, he gave twenty million dollars or so to HBCUs. Uh, most of these rappers, when when somebody mentioned the idea, when Dr. Uh, Walter Kimbrough at Dillard mentioned the idea of Dr. Dre giving some of that thirty-five million he gave to USC to HBCUs, not only did Dre not listen, but you had. 
thousands of, or even millions of black people who said, well, well, that's his own money. Don't you know, get, get your hand out of that man's pocket. You don't have no right to tell him what to do with his money. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you people? That's, that right there is, again, another example of a nigga mentality. Niggas don't want to help other black people. They don't want to see their community flourish. They want to see themselves fit into a stereotype. So um, here's, here's the thing. Um, you can't love Chris Rock or even Bill Cosby in with Charles Barkley and Don Lemon. Here's the difference. Uh, Rock will be very critical of black people for good reason. Sometimes there, there, there's some things that black people do that where we need to learn how to grow out of the slave mentality. Um, but at the same time, Chris will be equally harsh when it comes to dealing with whites. He will talk about structural racism. He will talk about police brutality. He will talk about all the things that whites do to harm black people, but he will also challenge black people about the things that black people do to harm black people. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, Don Lemon on Charles Barkley, on the other hand, are more likely to be to attack black people. And I throw Stephen A. Smith in this category as well. They're more likely to attack black people than they are to defend black people against white people. Or the way that they will criticize black people is not the same way that they will criticize white people. They are afraid. Um, Chris Rock fits into the tradition of, say, Louis Farrakhan. Nobody can ever argue in a million years that Farrakhan does not love black people. He has dedicated his life to fighting for black people in his own way, mind you. You may not agree with it with his whole approach, but you cannot argue that he's not an advocate for black people and for black black men in particular, which which uh, which is a group that, that pretty much doesn't get much advocacy from almost anyone in, in society. Uh, but Farrakhan will say things that about black people that are. Um, that are pretty, pretty harsh. Stuff that almost sounds like it came out of the mouth of Bill O'Reilly. Uh, but people will listen because they know he's saying it from a point of love. Uh, when I sat next to Farrakhan at the, uh, at the at a forum that we held, the New Paradigm Forum, you can find it online. Uh, we held it in Chicago last year. We sat together for two or three hours and talked about issues in the black community. Uh, it's a great video. You should really go check it out. Uh, you know, Minister Farrakhan, the first thing he started off by saying was that black people are dead. He said, he said, you did, you stink, you rot, you don't want, nobody wants to be around you because of the way you conduct yourself. You don't conduct yourself in a way that, 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 that communicates a, a desire for respect. So, so if you want to, you can somehow accuse Farrakhan of promoting respectability politics, but I don't see it that way. I see it as him saying, lift yourself up, black man, have pride in who you are, stand up for your family, stand up for your community, fight these battles, stop sitting around waiting for white people to suddenly decide they're going to stop being racist. That's not going to happen in your lifetime. And here's why, and this is why I'm not a liberal. Uh, I'm not a conservative, I'm not a liberal, I'm not a Democrat, I'm not a Republican, I don't believe in any of that crap, because they're always trying to recruit you, they're always trying to control your mind, the Democrats hold up that, that little sign, Republicans hate black people, so we all run to the polls to support the Democrats, and then the Democrats don't support us when it's time to really have our back, when it's time to really talk about the issues that matter to us, they they always have something else to do, but when it's time to vote, watch, watch, the, watch how they recruit you, every time it's time to vote, they're going to come out and tell you how horrible the Republicans are going to be, and that, and then that that makes some of us feel that that we somehow owe them something, which which is I I, I completely disagree with that. Um, two things that liberals don't do that um, that I that that bother me that which which define like part of the reason why I'm not a liberal. Number one, liberals don't really believe in the idea of black self reliance. Um, the things that Malcolm X talked about in terms of black people sticking together, black people building our own businesses, black people developing our communities, black people developing our own ways of thinking, black people educating their own children, etc. Liberals don't really support that kind of thing. And, not, and really they shouldn't. I mean, how can you depend on somebody to teach you self-reliance? That's, that's contradictory. You're dependent upon getting self-reliance. I'm going to depend on you to teach me how to depend on myself. Maybe that kind of works, but it doesn't really work when you're talking about dealing with patronizing white folks. Um, uh, the second thing that liberals uh, don't really buy into is the idea of black personal responsibility. They somehow think that um, that everything you do is perfect all the time. Everything, anytime any black person does anything wrong, there is there must be a reason that a white man caused it to happen. Um, when sometimes the reason that you do something stupid or ignorant is because you chose to be stupid and ignorant. And there's nothing wrong with saying that. That's common sense. And that's why I don't really uh, like the idea of getting engaged in these stupid 
ongoing political battles between the conservatives and the liberals is because they get ridiculous. They get dumb. They get to the point where Democrats are afraid of the idea of personal responsibility. Conservatives are, are seem to be afraid of the idea of, of any sort of um, structural compassion for those who are struggling for the poor or for minorities and, and for women's groups, etc. Um, and so I would just say uh, that, you know, I think that Michael Denzel Smith's piece is fine. I mean, for the most part, it's his opinion. But understand this. Um, there are certain uh, elements in the liberal establishment that have lots of money, lots of power, big platforms. And what they tend to do is they tend to elevate and promote African-Americans who uh, espouse an ideology that, that is consistent with their own. If you go read publications like Salon.com, and, and there are a few others out there, um, you'll, you'll notice that typically the black people that they put on, you know, on their platform tend to be people that are, uh, that are, that are more liberal than anything else. They're more liberal than black. They're more, um, they're, they might be fit more feminist than they are black. They're going to be more, uh, gay, you know, gay rights, uh, supportive than they are black. Um, it, now blackness might sort of fit in there somewhere. Uh, but it's very consistent with kind of a liberal ideology and it makes sense to a point i mean why would you pay somebody to say something other than what you want them to say but that's the problem and that's why black self-reliance is so important we to some extent are highly cons consistently dependent upon having some white corporate sponsor to back us in our quest for uh, fame or respectability so it's interesting you can almost flip the respectability politics issue on its head and you can not only point to black people who are saying that uh, that, that you have to behave a certain way to get white people to stop mistreating you that's wrong we know that but also black respectability politics may come into play when you talk about these Negroes trying to get opportunities at MSNBC and Salon.com they believe that look if I behave in a way that is respectable to white liberals then I'm going to be rewarded for that if I come in and tell them I'm a feminist or tell them that I believe more in gay rights than anything else I'm going to be more likely to have an opportunity than I am if I am a more complex kind of black person like Dr. Umar Johnson for example will never be featured in salon.com unless they're trying to destroy him and anybody who knows anything about Dr. Umar Johnson knows that despite the fact that he has views that don't fit into the mainstream he is consistently advocating for black people he is a very strong and, and passionate love for black people but you won't see him on CNN you won't see him on MSNBC you certainly won't see him on Fox News again unless they're trying to attack or destroy him um, you're, you're going to see him kind of in this space where he's dependent upon the black community to support him and have his back so um i you know i, I guess i'll just end this by saying that um that i think that that we have to 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 quit letting other people convince us that that <clears throat> that we should just lean on democrats and liberals to save us um that somehow advocating for personal responsibility is wrong that if you wait long enough for white people to stop mistreating you, that that's when your life will get better. Um, there is something to be said about the Malcolm X sort of philosophy, uh, which says, depend on yourself, build your own community, tell these other people to go to hell for a while, deal with your own issues, manage the problems in your community. When you see somebody behaving like a nigga, you tell him that he's better than that. You don't have to fight that person out of hate, but you can fight them out of love. And, uh, and so anybody who walks around excusing behavior that is detrimental to the African-American community is not a friend of the black community. They're usually, in many cases, it could be somebody that's trying to indoctrinate you into a liberal ideology. Why? So the, at the end of the day, you're going to run up and line up and vote for the Democrats so they can ignore you for another four years. And if you don't believe, if you think that this is something new, go back 50 years. Read what Malcolm X said about the Democrats. You'll, you'll see that the message has been very consistent. If we want new results, we have to try a new strategy. If we keep trying the same shit, we're going to keep getting the same shit. So um, that's all I want to say. I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World. Please take care. God bless. I'm gone. Peace.